All right, in this lesson, I'm going to do two examples of the slide and divide method for factoring trinomials when the leading coefficient is not one. And at the end of the lesson, I'll actually show you where this is coming from using a simple substitution technique. So the first thing is I'm just gonna start with 3x squared plus 34x plus 40. I'm gonna factor this using the AC method first, just so we have a little idea of what's going on. So the first thing is we would match this up with our AX squared plus BX plus C. So we need to know what is A, what is B, and what is C? So A is three, B is 34, and C is 40. So let me write that out. So A is equal to three, B is equal to 34, and let me fix this three here, and then C is going to be 40. The idea here is that you wanna find AC, so the product of A times C, so three times 40, that's 120. So let me write out that AC is equal to three times 40, which equals 120. And basically you wanna find two integers that have a product of 120, but then a sum of this B guy, which is 34. Well, because all the signs are positive, you could just think about the positive factor pairs of 120. So you have one in 120, two in 60, three in 40. And then when you get to four and 30, well, four plus 30 is gonna give you 34. So that's what you want. So you're gonna use these integers four and 30 to rewrite the middle term. So I'm gonna say this is three X squared plus four X plus 30x and then plus 40. Now what you're going to do is you're going to factor this using grouping. So you're going to say the first two are a group and let's say that the last two are a group and essentially from the first two you could pull out an x and inside you would have your 3x plus 4 and then plus from the last two you could pull out a 10 so inside you would have 3x plus 4. So this 3x plus 4 is a common binomial factor. So we're just going to factor that out. And let me slide down here a little bit and say that this equals, you have the quantity 3x plus 4, and then times the quantity, what's left over here, it's x, and then plus what's left over here, it's 10. So this is your answer. The quantity 3x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 10. Let me actually copy this and paste this in like this, just so we know what the answer should be. So you could check this really quickly with FOIL. 3x times x is 3x squared, so that's a check. The outer is 30x, and the inner is 4x. So 30x plus 4x is 34x, so that's a check. And then the last is 4 times 10, that's 40. So this is good to go. Now the slide and divide method is a little bit tricky. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this guy right here, and you're gonna slide it down here. In other words, you're gonna change that coefficient from a three to a one. So I'm gonna say this is x squared, plus 34x, and then plus, you're multiplying here, so it's that AC that we just looked at, three times 40 is 120. So that's the first step. This right here is not equal to this right here. And I'm gonna show you why this is valid later on with substitution, but this I think is the biggest hang up when people see this method because this is not equal to this. But let's just go with it for right now. We know because we factored a moment ago that if I wanted two integers whose sum was 34 and whose product was 120, well, that's gonna be four and 30. So I can use those two integers to factor this as X plus four. And then here, this would be X plus 30. Now, what you're going to do is you're gonna take this right here, this x plus four, and then times x plus 30, and we're gonna do an additional step. So we're going to divide each integer in the final position by that original a value that we slid over. So we're gonna divide this by three, and we're gonna divide this by three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if it simplifies to where the denominator is one, then just replace this completely. So 30 over three, that simplifies to 10, so you don't have to do anything else. So this is just X plus 10. Then here, four thirds, you really can't do anything with that. So because you have a denominator here that's not one, it's three in this case, you're gonna slide this right here out in front. So this becomes three X plus four. Now you can get rid of this. This is just a middle step that you don't need. And you'll see that you have three X plus four and three X plus four and then X plus 10 and then X plus 10. So that is the method. It is a lot faster, but again, there's a lot of room for error. A lot of times students will do it and forget to do the divide step at the end. Sometimes there's a GCF involved and they forget to pull it out at the beginning. If you're doing the AC method or reverse FOIL, you can catch it. But with this one, you'll just get the wrong answer. All right, so let's look at another example here. And at the end of this, I'll show you how you can show that this is valid using a simple substitution technique. So here we have 10x squared plus 7x minus 45. Again, if you wanna do the AC method for reference, you can. We'll just do it really quickly. This is A, this is B, and then this is C. So A is equal to 10, B is equal to seven, and then C is equal to negative 45. Take the sign with you, you can go plus negative to make that clear. And so when you think about AC, that's going to be 10 times negative 45, that's negative 450. 
Well, if you want two integers that have a product of negative 450 and have a sum of seven, remember because this sum right here is positive and the product is negative, you need mixed signs and you want the guy that's larger in absolute value to be positive. So here you want negative 18 and positive 25. And so the sum here is gonna be seven. So you could say that this is 10 X squared. Again, just use these to rewrite things. So minus 18 X, and you can go plus 25 X. Again, just using this to rewrite this term right here. And then you can go minus 45. And again, if you factor this using grouping from the first two, let me actually just put this in parentheses so that that's clear for you. From the first two, you could pull out a two X. So that would give you five X minus nine. From the last two, you could pull out a five. So that would give me five X minus nine. So this right here, this five X minus nine is a common binomial factor. And of course you could just pull that out. So we'll just say that this is five X minus nine. So that quantity times the quantity, two X is left here. And then plus five is left here. So this is our factorization. Again, we can just copy this and let's come down here and let's put that this is equal to this. Again, if you wanna check it, five X times two X is 10 X squared. The outer is 25 X. The inner is minus 18 X. Again, if you sum those, you're gonna get seven X. And then the last negative nine times five is negative 45. So this does work. If you wanted to do slide and divide here, again, you would slide this down. So this is gonna become one. So we have X squared plus seven X. This is minus 450. And again, we already know the two integers to make this work. If I go back up, I guess the same two we used earlier. So it's just negative 18 and 25. So let's go X minus 18 and then X plus 25. And let me just copy this down here. So now we have X minus 18, and then we'll say X plus 25. Let me actually make this a little bit better. Again, now you're gonna think about the leading coefficient, which was 10, so that's your A value, and divide this by 10 and divide this by 10. Okay, so go through and simplify. Neither one of these is gonna simplify to where the denominator is one. So what you're gonna be looking at here is 18 over 10. Well, 18 divided by two is nine, and 10 divided by two is five. So again, this is not one, so this slides out in front, so you get five X minus nine. Then over here, 25 over 10, well, 25 divided by five is five. 10 divided by five is two. Again, this is not one, so slide this over here. So this becomes two, and you get rid of it from over here. And so you have five X minus nine, five X minus nine, two X plus five, and then two X plus five. So again, the method does work. Okay, so in terms of showing the math here, there are a lot of different paths that you can go down. So if you're looking online for a proof for this, a lot of them are very, very hard to understand. So I'm just gonna do it with an example. So to make our math easier to understand, I'm gonna let a variable like Y be equal to our trinomial. So y equals to, or y is the same as, 10x squared plus 7x minus 45. The reason I'm doing that is because we're gonna have to do operations to both sides to manipulate things. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to understand. Okay, so the first step here is we're gonna let x be equal to this z over 10. So in other words, I have an x here that's squared, and I have an x here. So all I'm gonna do, in the place of x, I'm gonna plug in a z over 10. In the place of x, I'm gonna plug in a z over 10. And I'm just going to simplify here. So if I square this guy right here, I'm gonna end up with z squared over 100, and then nothing else is really gonna change. Then I'm just gonna go through and cancel. Well, 100 divided by 10 would give me 10, so that's where that 10 comes from down there, and then here I could just write 7z over 10. So everything else is pretty much the same. Okay, and now at this point, what I'm going to do, and this is why I think it's helpful to have y, we are gonna multiply both sides of the equation by 10. So I'm gonna get 10y is equal to z squared, because the denominator is cleared, plus 7z, because the denominator is cleared, then minus 450. Now notice that at this point, you have basically taken that leading coefficient, which was 10, and you've slid it down here. So now you have something where the leading coefficient is one, and you basically have ac right here. So at this point, again, you're just gonna come down here, and you're going to factor this guy with those two integers. So you need negative 18 and then positive 25. Remember that we let x be equal to z over 10. So all we have to do is then say that z is equal to 10x. All I'm doing is multiplying both sides of the equation by 10. And then everywhere there's a z, so here and here, you're just gonna replace that with 10x. So that goes here and that goes here. Now, if you want to, this is the quicker way to do it. At this point, you could just pull out the GCF from each. So from this guy, you could just pull out a two. And then from this guy, you could pull out a five. Notice that two times five is 10. And so essentially, if you divide both sides by 10, you get the factor form. So you get y equals 5x minus 9, that quantity, times the quantity 2x plus 5. So that's one way to do it. But again, a lot of people don't like that when you're explaining things. So let me show you this a longer way, and this is going to match our slot and divide. So this right here, again, just comes from us replacing the z with 10x. 
And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 10. And the way you do that is you put a 10 out in front and then you divide by 10 for each guy inside the binomial. So 10 goes out in front and divide each thing by 10 in there. And when you simplify, you get 10y is equal to 10 times the quantity x minus 9 fifths times your 10 times the quantity x plus 5 halves. Now notice that this part right here and this part right here, that's the same as what we had earlier. So what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply 10 by 10. That's going to give me 100. And so we're going to have this 10y is equal to 100 times this quantity x minus 9 fifths times this quantity x plus 5 halves. You can divide both sides by 10. You get y is equal to 10 times the quantity x minus 9 fifths times the quantity x plus 5 halves. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to break 10 up into 5 times 2. You're going to put what you need in front of it to clear the denominator. In other words, you put the 5 here because it's the denominator of 5 here that you want to clear. You put the 2 here because there's a denominator of 2 here that you want to clear. So when this comes in, the denominator gets cleared, and what was the denominator is going to end up right here. So you can see that's basically what's happening with the slide and divide. Remember, when we did this, this slid up here. Well, it's the same thing because this 5 comes in here, then this 5 comes in here and cancels, so you get 5x minus 9. Then over here, again, this would have slid over here, but now the way we have it, the 2 comes inside, so you have 2x plus, it cancels from here, you're 5. So you get y equals 5x minus 9 and then times your 2x plus 5. So again, another way to look at it with substitution. This is a good way to do it where it's not so complicated with basically all variables involved because then it gets very complicated. And I think a lot of people, especially in like an Algebra 1 or an Algebra 2 class, are not going to be able to follow that. So I think it's a little bit easier to do it this way.